my name's Sarah Abbott. I'm studying forensic computing at the University of Central Lancashire. Hi, my name's Duncan. Um, I started in the first year studying forensic computing and now I've moved over to another aspect of it, which is networking. Hi, my name is Ulfi Patel and I'm studying a BSc in forensic computing. It was one of the first courses in the UK to actually start running forensic computing, which is what I'm interested in. They were very easy on the information. They gave me lots and lots of support and guided me through the system of UCAS because obviously being a mature student I, I hadn't been in education for a long time. The campus itself is amazing, it's got excellent facilities, the forensic lab itself has got the latest computers with the latest software applications, um, and the area itself is pretty nice, a massive campus, the town centre is local, I don't live too far as well so everything's convenient. Originally I took up um, computing as a general subject and then after my first year we were told about different possible routes that we could take and forensic computing seemed like the most interesting route for me. Oh, I've always been interested in computers. Um, so the interest has been how the internal workings of a computer are. The more technology that's around is going to be the more um, crime that's going to take place and therefore um, forensic computing specialists are going to be needed more and more. In the initial forensic degree we had a look at how the internals worked, um, how the different parts of the computer work together, how they work separately and how they can be investigated, which is the interesting part. In the digital forensic investigation module we've just covered a lot about scam emails, uh, so like Nigeria 419 scam emails. Um, we've, we've actually done like expert witness reports which forensics will have to do quite a lot. We look at um, the different file systems um, and how they work together and how people who have ulterior motives, how they could hide data, how um, if you are doing something that's not totally legal, how you can actually get a, or try to get away with it, and how the work of a forensic investigator, um, it also looks at the legal aspects of what you can and what you cannot do. Um, you look at the impact of your actions as an, an investigator, which is also very useful. We've also done other stuff such as professional skills where you enhance your employability skills. We've done um, ethical hacking, um, we do a bit of networking as well, so the range is fantastic. You, you, you're not just concentrating on forensic computing, even though that's the main subject that you're focusing on. There's other parts of the computing industry that you also focus on. The resources we have, um, I mean, this the room that we're currently in last year um, had a different set of computers. So the computers, the machines we have here are much faster. First of all, the machines themselves are very expensive machines, as you can see this one here. Um, we've got all the latest software on it and it's very powerful machines as well so we can get our work done without any problems. The library um, has a great system whereby you can access the library um, with um, a database of books that you can read. You don't have to be in the library but that's actually held by the university and that's also very impressive. We've got like um, Wiser uh, which where you can like send your work and they'll proofread it for you and they'll look at your grammar and your spelling. Um, and we've also got futures as well, so you've got like, it looks at your, your actual future, your, your career choices, your CVs. Um, there's a lot of one-to-one -one support with the tutors as well. You can just drop in with the tutors at any time and you can speak to anyone you want to. So it's been really good. The lectures, um, the slides are always available, the, the notes are always available. Um, so you, you have a lot of support. We've had guest lecture speakers from other forensic um, companies such as Zentex, i4, um, we had this Bon Sol on training thing as well, which we had. It's a really expensive course, but the university subsidised it for us. There's a lot of career choices you can do. If you think of any job that would involve computing, you're likely to get that. Just because we've studied a lot of different, a, a lot of range of modules. So, like we've done computer security, we've done wireless networking, we've done networking, we've done forensic investigations, we've done absolutely all sorts, anything you can think of, we've covered databases, just everything. Ideally I want to be in, in this particular industry, um, I've applied for a job as a mobile forensic investigator which is currently in the process, I've applied for other jobs in the computing industry as well, it is a difficult time at the moment, jobs and everything, but there are there are jobs out there and you have to be, you have to give the extra effort. Well I'm looking forward in terms of my future career because the skills that I've gained here, this forensic part, I can take to big business, I can, because of the legal aspects of the things that we've learnt here, I can um, be one up on the people that don't have the same training. 
Uh, well, I did actually just get accepted into a, a job about a month ago, uh, so I'm going to be working at this company called Logica. Congratulations. Uh, Thanks. What, what are you going to be doing over there? Um, I'm going to be working in IT defence. I can't actually say any more about that. I'm not allowed to say any more. Finally, your project was based on private browsing modes. I was concentrating on the two private browsing modes in Internet Explorer and Mozilla Firefox. So I did a forensic analysis of those. My final year project, I've been doing a digital forensic investigation into the artifacts created by Trillion. Trillion's like a, an instant messenger service, which which you can sign into and then you can speak to people over MSN, Yahoo, Facebook, all at the same time. So I've been doing a forensic investigation into that to see what artifacts are created when you use that program. What I did is I produced a website, I had quizzes on the website so it's interactive, I had a YouTube channel which shows you how to do experiments and I've also had documents on ethics and laws within the website as well. It was actually my tutor who, who encouraged me to go for this job at Logica which I ended up getting um, but other than that like I said there's futures awards um, so you'll, you'll do things like making your own CVs uh, we've done elevator pitches so it's like a video CV the futures award was very very useful I mean in the second year we looked at I mean I have a CV um, I have I also have experience of applying for, for jobs and doing interviews but you can never assume that you know everything and there were always things within the futures award that um, you could pick up different techniques of, of applying for jobs uh, different countries require different into uh, CVs, some countries require you to have a photograph, the UK doesn't, for example. You have a project supervisor, so that you would refer to that person on a weekly or every two weeks, just for about half an hour, one hour, to get some guidance. But apart from that, you're doing it on your own, so it makes you a lot more independent. Um, it helps you increase your project management skills, and which is very useful in the future as well. We had a training day with Bon Sol on where they came to us, and um, what happened is a barrister came from the company Bon Sol on, and uh, they taught us about expert witness report writing and also uh, courtroom skills, which obviously is going to be really handy for um, forensic investigators in the future if they ever do need to go in the courtroom and give an expert witness statement. In your first year at university, you will have... Um, it, it'll be a lot more relaxed than what you think it'll be. You'll still have a lot of work to do, but you do get the support from the universities and from your tutors, which you can contact at any time. I would say to anybody else that's interested in university, generally do it. Um, it's a great experience. Um, I think learning is a privilege. Um, and as a mature student, I've taken a lot from this. Do you have a project supervisor, so that you would refer to that person on a weekly or every two weeks? Just for about half an hour, one hour, to get some guidance. But apart from that, you're doing it on your own, so it makes you a lot more independent. It's changed the way I think about education because there is so much more available here in a university. Um, the societies, the clubs, the people that you meet, the friendships that you make, um, they are all very, very important things that I will take with me, um, including the further higher education, like master's degrees and stuff like this. It's so worth doing just to, to leave university with a degree and being able to put that on your CV is absolutely fantastic.